there. Join us in worship as we uh, go down to the river. what's going on. Hope you find that there's lots going on in your life today, that God is at, at work in the midst of all that we're experiencing here in this coronavirus uh, lockdown and uh, the social distancing and the things that are going on. But we want to give thanks to the Lord our God as Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1. He says, I thank God whom I serve just as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers recalling your tears I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also for this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Let me just say before I go on is that I want to thank God for godly grandmothers and, and mothers as we celebrate this Mother's Day. I'm thankful that I have a praying mom. I'm thankful that I have a wife who's a godly mother has led our children in the paths of righteousness and truth. And for those of you out there uh, who have left behind this great legacy to your children and to your grandchildren, I salute you today. God bless you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying out of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power love and self-discipline so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me as his prisoner rather join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God he has saved us and called us to this holy life not because of anything that we have done but because of his own purpose and grace and this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, 
Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And that's why I'm suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard that which I have entrusted to him until that day. What you've heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Let's give thanks to God for all that he has done. Giving thanks for our moms and grandmoms who taught us at their need the good news of the gospel. And for those who entrusted the faith to us, those teachers, those leaders who invested in you and me to point us in the path of righteousness and truth. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things have done in whom we still rejoice who from our mother's heart and bless us on the way with countless gifts of love as we desire to pray oh may this doubt is gone Yeah. 
life is over and we leave behind a legacy for others to follow, will they find that we, you and I have been faithful? That's my prayer today, that we leave behind evidence that we are faithful to the one who was faithful to us, the Lord Jesus Christ. of trial and, and difficult circumstances that will uh, trust in you and that we will leave behind to those who follow after us a legacy and the evidence 
that we've been faithful, and that they too can follow in our footsteps and we'll point them to faith in Jesus Christ and eternal life. Bless our pastor as he brings the word of God to us today. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, and glad to have you worshiping with us here at Calvary this Sunday morning. Um, some of you may have figured out from my Wednesday night, I had a couple people ask, um, it, are Sunday mornings pre-recorded? This is pre-recorded on Saturday. We're presenting it as if it were live on Sunday morning um, so that we can join you uh, there in the comments section of Facebook. That's why I can type and preach at the same time. I know you thought I was super talented, or Allison had stolen my identity, but uh, um, next week, well, actually, let me just uh, ask the, the praise team, remind me at the end of the sermon to come back and, and talk a little bit about the coming weeks and the schedule just briefly uh, before we conclude this morning. I want to say happy Mother's Day. Uh, we are so glad uh, and thankful uh, for our moms, so glad to be able to take a moment and, and tell them we love them. Uh, the moms who raised us, the moms who raise our kids, the, the, the moms in the fellowship. Uh, we just uh, want, want to honor them today. I'm not going to be doing the traditional preach on mothers on Mother's Day. Uh, I'm not doing the, the, the Proverbs 31 woman. I'm not doing uh, Timothy's mom. Uh, we are going to talk about when life doesn't make sense because that's a mom's job, isn't it? Making life make sense when it doesn't make sense. So we're going to continue in our sermon series on the life of Joseph. And uh, we'll get to that in a few moments. We'll be in chapter 41 of Genesis. Uh, as Joseph now is preparing to enter into Pharaoh's presence. But before we get there, I want to spend a few moments together in prayer with you. I want to share a couple of prayer requests. Uh, we've had a, a couple of deaths I want to make you aware of. Uh, one in the church family, Judy Codil. Uh, who is uh, was 92, and now she's with Jesus. And uh, she'd been in the nursing home for a while, and we want to, want to celebrate her life and her faithfulness, her legacy, that smile and that quick wit. I always had a great time teasing with Judy and laughing. Um, those of you who knew Judy probably know that uh, she has discovered, and her, because her first question to God was whether Elvis is really in heaven. And so uh, she is a huge Elvis fan and uh, going to miss Judy. We'll be doing her funeral on Monday at 1 o'clock in Anderson. The visitation is from 11 to 1, but it is limited to 25 people. So church, express your love and condolences through the Funeral Homes website uh, um, because the, the 25 people is going to be taken up by family. And, and we need to honor that, but we also need to let them know that we love them. And they want to encourage them along the way. Um, a fellow pastor from uh, Beach Grove, Southwood Baptist Church, Stephen Meister, was trimming trees a, a couple of days ago. He fell, uh, landed on his head, and he has gone to be with the Lord. He had uh, several young children, a couple of, of, at least a couple of them were adopted, uh, wife, and a church that is now mourning his loss. So remember the Meister family. Uh, remember uh, Rick Porter as he is preaching for them this weekend, I believe, and going to be helping them through this time of, of tragedy. Again, uh, uh, seems relevant that we're talking about when life doesn't make sense, when these kind of things continue to happen or begin to happen or we deal with them in our lives. And so we ask that you would pray for that family and that church family as they mourn the loss of their pastor. Um, I had, oh, uh, I had a third one. I knew I had a third one I wanted to share with you this morning. Uh, our neighbor uh, here at the church, uh, two doors up on, west, on Van Buren Street on the west side of the road, the Carpenter family, uh, had a house fire, uh, chimney fire, uh, Friday night. And so uh, if you are coming by the church or through the church, um, they, they uh, are safe. They are healthy. Uh, they stay in, staying with a neighbor at the moment. Uh, but they've probably lost most of their house and their belongings. And so I've already uh, been in contact with them. They are being ministered to through their local church and their pastor is there with them. But uh, just pray for them. 
Um, I don't know of any needs they had, I, I offered and, and um, they didn't have any requests at this point. But just pray for the carpenters as their life has been turned upside down. And uh, again, when life doesn't make sense. And finally, as we go into our prayer time, uh, again, we want to say thank you to our mothers. We love our mothers. But we also want to remember those who have lost moms. Uh, Stephen's wife. Uh, uh, those who have lost uh, um, children. Those moms who, who aren't having a good day. Uh, we want to remember those who are sad and struggling. And just ask that God would comfort all those who need comfort as well. And so if you'll join me in prayer as we celebrate our moms, as we love on our moms, we also want to show compassion to those who, who today... who for whom today is a tough day. Join me as we pray. Father, I thank you that you are God and I am not. That I don't have to understand everything that's going on or make sense of it. That I can trust that you are still perfect and that you are still holy. That you have a plan and that you can take what men uh, means for harm or Satan means for harm and you can use it for good or you can take that which makes no sense and you can make sense out of it Father I am thankful that I can trust you uh, with my life today and with my salvation and eternity um, for eternity Father I thank you that, that uh, we can come before you this morning to, to praise you through song, to worship you, to learn about you as we study and read together, as we enter into your presence through prayer. Lord, I, I, I want to say uh, a special thank you to all the moms and ask your special blessing on them. But I also want to ask that your comfort and peace would be extended to those who are struggling this day. For, for those whom this day is not a day of celebration, but a day of remembrance or mourning or grief. Father, my prayer is that you would turn our grief to celebration. That you would turn our mourning to peace and calm and understanding. That you would uh, replace that which is missing inside of us uh, with your Holy Spirit and your presence, your love, your compassion. Father, speak to us today through your word as we continue to study about life not making sense and as you have shown us in the life of Joseph so many struggles. And as we today will begin to turn toward your plan being fulfilled in his life. Lord that day is different for each one of us. We ask until we reach that day that you would continue to guide us and strengthen us. And when that day arrives Lord that we would be prepared to step forward. And say here I am. Use me. Father thank you. For all that you do. For all that you are. For the love and call you've placed on each of us. For the family you've given us here at Calvary. And now Lord as we open your word together. Our prayer is that you would be glorified. And that we would be changed to be more like you. It is in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Well, Church again I'm so glad uh, to have you with us worshiping here. Through technology on Facebook Live. I'm thankful for the, the team and the crew that comes each week to make this possible. Uh, you see some of them on stage. We got some uh, tech crew as well doing our video and doing our audio. And uh, we can't do this without them. And so thank you guys so much for your sacrificial time and giving. And um, church, thank you for your giving of offering. We praise the Lord for the opportunity to be a part of what he's doing around the world as we give. For the Annie Armstrong Easter offering that we took up, over $6,000 going to North American Missions. Being able to pay the light bills, the lights are still on. Uh, being able to, to, to continue to support our ministry ministries and missionaries. And uh, thank you. Continue the good work of giving. And church, I'm looking forward to that day when we can do the good work of going. When we can be together in, in physical presence and serve the Lord together. But until then, we'll continue down this path. Join me in Genesis chapter 41 as we launch back into the life of Joseph. Uh, just a, a really quick review. Favored son, prison, uh, uh, sold into slavery, uh, moved to the head of uh, Potiphar's house, uh, 
falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, ended up in prison, became the, the leader of the prison and uh, running it, ran into this uh, baker and this cupbearer, interpreted their dreams. The uh, cupbearer is restored. The baker is killed. And yes, he was hanged uh, um, and, and dead. And several people did, did uh, uh, caught uh, uh, a poor use of grammar by a southern boy. And so uh, going to make sure we try to correct that. Um, and now we're moving from there to where the scripture said at the end of chapter 40, the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. And then we pick up in chapter 41, the cupbearer in the house of Pharaoh, Joseph in the prison. At the end of two years, again, not overnight, not next week, not next month, not even next year. At the end of two years... Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing beside the Nile when seven healthy-looking, well-fed cows came up from the Nile and began to graze among the reeds. After them, seven other cows, sickly and thin, came up from the Nile and stood beside those cows along the bank of the Nile. The sickly, thin cows ate the healthy, well-fed cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. He fell asleep and he dreamed a second time. Seven heads of grain, plump and good, came up on one stalk. After them, seven heads of grain, thin and scorched by the east wind, sprouted up. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven plump, full ones. Then Pharaoh woke up and it was only a dream. Verse 8, when morning came, he was troubled and he summoned the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dream. But no one could interpret the dream. Then verse 9. The chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh. Today I remember my faults. And Pharaoh was angry with his servants. And he put, uh, put me and the chief baker into custody. Uh, of the captain of the guards. And, and, and he and I had dreams on the same night. And. Each dream had its own meaning, and now a young Hebrew slave, the captain of the, uh, a Hebrew slave of the captain of the guards, was there with us, and he told us our dreams, and he interpreted our dreams for us, and each had its own interpretation. It turned out just the way he interpreted to them to us. I was restored to my position, and the other man was hanged. Verse fourteen. Then Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and they quickly brought him to the dungeon. Brought him from the dungeon. He, he shaved. He changed his clothes. And he went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph. I have had a dream. And no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said about you. That you can hear a dream. And interpret it. Just put your, your mind on pause there for a minute. And let's look at the lead up. To what God is going to teach us today. Again, remember, the life of Joseph is a life that just doesn't make sense. It's taken a lot of times for the 17-year-old boy who, who is having issues with his brothers and issues with his father because of his dreams that God had given him, a dream of greatness. But that dream of greatness was shattered as he was sold into slavery, as he was thrown into prison, and as he was forgotten by a cupbearer whose dream, whose dream he interpreted through the will of the Lord. And for two years. It says at the end of two years. How patient are you? I'm telling you at the end of two months. My patience is growing thin. For some of you at the end of two days. Your patience had grown thin. Some of you are more patient than others. At the end of two years. After the cupbearer. And the baker. We don't know the period of time prior to the cupbearer and the baker. A period of time Joseph has spent in prison. Are you willing to learn what you need to learn while you wait? We talked about this a little bit last week at the end of the service, uh, at the end of the message. Joseph was being prepared to be placed before Pharaoh. He did not have the skills until... The time he was called. He had to gain and earn trust. He had to gain and earn knowledge and wisdom. He had to gain and earn the ability to administrate will. Well, these large masses of people. 
and God was preparing Joseph for something great. What we're not told in scripture though, but what is inferred is that Joseph was faithful daily. He was faithful in the small things as well as the big things. And even when life wasn't making sense, Joseph was still honoring his father in heaven and keeping God first. Now, with that said in the life of Joseph and that character trait that, that we're going to see, we want to move to the chief cupbearer, verse 9, who said to Pharaoh, Today I remember my faults. I want to use this to encourage you. If you've made a commitment to the Lord and you have failed miserably, which all of us have at some point, right? Don't keep mourning the failure, but remember your faults. 1 John 1, 9 says, confess your sins. That means remember your sinfulness. Put it before God. He already knows about it. But let God know that you know about it. And God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Remember your faults. It's not too late to say, I have failed and I will do better. You get to do that. God allows that. God wants that. And God's waiting for you to do it. The cup bears opportunity to bless Joseph for blessing him has not passed. Should have the cupbearer done it two years ago? Absolutely. But it's not too late to do the right thing because the right thing is always the right thing. Remember your faults. Confess them to the Lord and then make changes. That's the repentance aspect to make it right. And begin to do those right things. The cupbearer recognized his faults. He confessed them to Pharaoh. We confess before the Lord. And Pharaoh said, bring me Joseph. God had a plan. From the time Joseph was a young man. But in order for God's plan in Joseph's life to come to fruition. God had to move Joseph from, the, from, from, from being the shepherd boy. Of Israel to Egypt. How do you get him to Egypt? You sell him into slavery. Use the Ishmaelites. How do you get him before Pharaoh? Send him to prison. Where he's going to meet up with Pharaoh's close advisors. Doesn't seem to make sense, does it? And life often doesn't make sense until it does. If I, if I had a visual aid this morning, it would probably be the FedEx logo. So you all probably have already figured this out. I was probably, I don't know, mid-20s. and uh, No, I was in college when I figured this out. A professor showed it to me. I've never unseen it since I saw it. You know there's an arrow in the FedEx logo? You'll start looking at it now, and you're going to find that arrow uh, between the, uh, I think it's between the F and the E. Is that right? I think now how, how it goes. But there's an arrow in there. If you look at the uh, Browning deer head logo, um, you know there's two deer in that logo. If you really start looking into it, you'll see it. And once you see it, you'll never unsee it. God's plan is kind of that way sometimes in our lives. We go a long time with God working to get us where we need to be and preparing us to see something that we've, that's been there all along but we've never seen before. And then once we see it, we can't unsee it. Once we know it, we can't unknow it. And it then takes over and guides our life to the trajectory. the trajectory. I can't say that word. In the way he wants us to go. See, God has a plan for Joseph from the beginning, but he had to get him there. He had to prepare him along the way. And now God is going to use Joseph to do some amazing things. And Pharaoh has called a Hebrew slave out of prison. Unheard of. Unusual. But this dream Pharaoh had, had caused him to lose sleep and it caused him to be dismayed and it caused him to his life to be disrupted and he needed some help so he does the unthinkable hebrews to egyptians and we'll see this in a couple of more lessons when joseph's family comes around and they can't even eat at the same table as the egyptians they are like dogs in classification they are unclean unholy and unable to be in the same uh, dinner table or same room oftentimes as the Egyptian. They are not fit for anything but slave service. Yet 
Pharaoh has called this Hebrew into his presence. Now look what happens. When Joseph gets the call, he shaves. He puts on clean clothes. It doesn't tell us this, but I'm guessing he took a shower and Potiphar's wife wasn't anywhere near. He cleaned up to get into Pharaoh's presence. When we go before God, as we begin to inherit the plan he has for us and the place he's going to use us, we've got to make sure we've cleaned up. We gotta get ready. We gotta we got we gotta be uh, dressed right. We we have to uh, be be uh, put on the right attire. We have to put on the right attitude. We as we go before the Lord God, as Joseph goes before the Lord Pharaoh, not in the same categories, big L, little L. Uh, there's a lesson for us that as we go forward, we have to be prepared. We have to be willing to change. We have to look different. And he enters Pharaoh, and here's what I want you to see next. Verse 16. He enters the presence of Pharaoh. Joseph said, I am not able to... Oh, uh, I got ahead of myself. Where did I stop reading? Verse 14, I think. Let's pick up in verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and they quickly brought him to the, uh, from the dungeon. He shaved, he changed clothes, and he went to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and no one can interpret it. But I have heard it said that you, about you, that you can... Um, hear a dream and interpret it. Verse 16, I am not able to. It is God who will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. So God, so, so Pharaoh explains the, the dream to Joseph. In verse 25, Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams mean the same thing. Verse 27, the seven thin, sickly cows that came up after them are seven years, and the seven worthless, scorched heads of grain are seven years of famine. It is just as I told Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. I want to stop there. We'll come back and catch up here. I am not able, Joseph said, verse 16. I am not able. God is able. So this is, is why I think Joseph had learned faithfulness even in the small things. He has the opportunity to be made great in the house of Pharaoh or in Pharaoh's eyes. He has the opportunity to show off and shine. But instead, he humbles himself to Pharaoh who is saying, can you interpret my dream? And he says, no, I can't. But my God can. So he's allowed God to take center here. And now God is on the line to work through Joseph. Now God has called Joseph. He has prepared Joseph. He has put Joseph in this place. And Joseph is humble. And he is not trying to take credit for what is about to happen. But rather my God gets all the glory. I am not able. It is God Pharaoh tells him the dream, and Joseph begins to say, this dream is God working. And he says it twice, because he says it twice, it means it's absolutely going to happen. The two dreams are, are basically the same thing. There's a great famine coming. Joseph has called, been called before Pharaoh. He said, it's only God who can give interpretation. And then he continues in verse 28. It is just as I told Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh. We need to be returning all the glory to God. We need to be making sure that God is understood as the uh, source of our power, of a source of our wisdom, source of our understanding, source of our abilities. God gets the glory. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Now Joseph explains this. Seven years of great abundance are coming through the land of Egypt. And after them, seven years of famine will take place. And all the abundance in the land of Egypt will be forgotten. And the famine will devastate the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because of the famine that follows it. For the famine will be very severe. Since the dreams were given twice to Pharaoh, it means that the matter has been determined by God. And he will carry it out soon. So we're going to get into two pieces here. We got the problem and we're going to get the solution. The problem is the famine is coming. And the famine is going to wipe out all the good. If you haven't figured this out yet, we humans have a very short memory. 
we only remember the good times in the midst of the good times. And as soon as the bad times come, all, everything is bad. Goods never happen. Woe is me. That's the way we operate in life, isn't it? We can't seem to remember all those many blessings. That's why we have a hymn that reminds us to count our many blessings and to name them one by one. I don't know how many times I've been counseling with people and had to bring them back to that simple principle when they are so focused in on the woe is me and where is God and God has abandoned me and he's never loved me, he's never taken care of me and we start counting the ways that he has shown himself faithful and true in their life. And they walk out humbled. Because God is faithful. But we often forget. And here the Egyptians are, are being told they're going to forget the seven years of greatness. Because the seven years of famine are so hard. Church, don't forget the years of greatness. Don't forget the blessings of God. Don't forget those times where he has blessed you. And, and like he did with the uh, Israelites going through the promised land. Set up the, the pillars, the stones of remembrance. Times to look back at those altars. Or as Abraham traveled the wells and, and God's presence. And the different things that it meant at different times. We need to remember our Lord. Jesus uh, in the upper room, he says, remember me, we need to be a people of remembrance. We don't need to forget. The problem is a famine is coming. But God has let him know ahead of time. There's a problem we face as, as people, humans. We are sinners. And sinners separate us. And cause us to have an eternal destination of death or hell. Hades. But there's a solution to death. Faith in Jesus Christ. We need to remember. That God loves us. And he gave us his only begotten son. We don't have to live in the famine. We can live in the fruit. God provided. A path. A way. So that we can make it. To his banqueting table. The problem is sin. The problem is lacking. The problem is hurt that's coming. And so often we focus on. What. Is missing rather than what we have. God has called us to blessing. Eternal life in heaven. The Holy Spirit indwelling us today. We focus on the problem of sin and separation and guilt. Rather than on the payment that Jesus Christ gave us. Rather than on the satisfaction. Of the debt payment. Rather than on the freeing from the guilt. God gives Joseph a solution for Pharaoh. We need to pay attention to this and take note of this because there's a problem and there's a solution. There's a problem. It's called sin and there's a solution. His name is Jesus. Here's the solution to the famine. Verse 33. So now let Pharaoh look for a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint overseers to the land and take a fifth of the harvest out of the land of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. Let them gather all the excess uh, food during these good years that are coming under Pharaoh's authority. Store the grain in the city so that they may preserve it as food. And the food will be re, uh, a reserve for the land during the seven years of famine that will take place in the land of Egypt. And the country will not be wiped out. Because of the famine. God has given you information ahead of time. God has shown you the problem. He's also given you the solution. There's going to be seven years of great harvest stored up. Because there's going to be seven years of famine. Now Joseph, I don't think here, had a clue he was going to be asked to lead this endeavor. But he's telling Pharaoh, choose a wise man. Here again, I think, I think Joseph has learned his humility. And he's just telling what the Lord has to say. Now, the Lord has a plan. He knows what's going to happen. But I think Joseph is just being honest here. You need to get a wise man. I think the Lord's speaking through him. And lead this out. we got our problem. Our solution is God always provides. Oftentimes, he provides in advance for something that is to come in the future. Why did I go through that hardship? Well, because he knew somewhere down the line I was going to help somebody else through a hardship. Why did I go through financial difficulty? Because I had to learn the value of a dollar so that when he blessed me, I could use it well for his kingdom's sake. Why, why, why 
oftentimes for something that hasn't yet happened. Something we can't even imagine. A direction that we didn't even know life would go. Now for Joseph, they are in a, a moment of time. This is about to happen. It's going to happen quickly. He's giving you two dreams, the same thing. It's coming soon. In the book of Esther, in chapter 4, we get that famous uh, quote. For a time such as this. You are the appointed person for this moment. Joseph is the appointed man for this moment. He's applying in his life that reality that we're taught again in Esther. For a time such as this. Every one of us in our life have that moment. Or maybe moments. Probably many of these encounter times. Where God has prepared you specifically for this. Bud and I have... Uh, one of our Sunday school teachers uh, have had this conversation for, for years now about uh, um, difficulties in church life and, and, and ministry opportunities never being convenient. Ministry is never convenient. And a second part to that is, if God has revealed it to you, then you should be the one to engage it. Over the years, I'll tell you, and I think Paul will amen this. Anybody that's been in ministry very long knows that somebody's going to come to us and God's going to reveal a problem to them for us to fix. Oh, there's a light bulb out, Pastor. Dan told me I can't change the, the light bulbs up here anymore. Uh, there, 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 there's, a, there's a smudge on the handrail right next to the Lysol lights, Pastor, if you're wondering where it is. Why don't you go ahead and take care of that for us, Pastor? My next door neighbor has a child who's not behaving well and they need prayer. Pastor, will you pray for them? And I'm not telling you I don't want to be a part of that. Absolutely, I want to be a part of that. But you know what? They're your next door neighbor. You've got a relationship with them. Why aren't you praying with them? For a time such as this, you have been prepared and God has revealed it to you. Now you bring us alongside. We want to be alongside. We want to serve with you. We want to serve you. But don't give up what God has called you to do. And give it to somebody else. Joseph was placed before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh now is going to reward Joseph for his faithfulness. And this doesn't change the history of being a slave. This doesn't change the history of being a prisoner. But all of that faithfulness is coming to fruition in the life of Joseph. And he's going from problem to, to, to solution to reward. Let's pick up in verse 37. The proposal pleased Pharaoh. And all his servants. And he said to them. Can we find anyone like this man. Who has God's spirit in him. So Pharaoh said to Joseph. Again Joseph said. I can't God can. This is what the Lord says. And now Pharaoh repeats to Joseph. Since God. Has made all this known to you. There is no one as discerning and wise as you are. God got the glory. Because Joseph placed God at the forefront of his life. Verse 40, Pharaoh says to Joseph, You will be over my house and all my people will obey your commands. Only I as king will be greater than you. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, See, I am placing you over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and he put it on Joseph's hand. He clothed him with fine linen garments and he placed a gold chain around his neck. He had Joseph ride in his second chariot and servants called out before him, Make way. So he placed him over all the land of Egypt Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh and no one will be able to raise a hand or his foot in all the land of Egypt without your permission. Pharaoh gave Joseph the name Zaphonoth, Penea, and gave him a wife, the daughter uh, of a priest. And Joseph went throughout the land of Egypt, 
Yeah, they're, not, they're, they're smiling at me in here in the room because I skipped saying those names. If I can't say trajectory, there's no way I'm saying these Hebrew names. And we do think that some of those names, actually Joseph's name is probably a Hebrew name. And it means something along the lines of the interpreter of dreams. I forget now the exact interpretation. I, I read through that. But uh, here's what's happened. Just in case you missed it. The slave who was in the pit ruled over Potiphar's house. A small domain. The slave who ruled over a small domain. Well, by the way, let me go back a step further. A shepherd boy who ruled over sheep became a slave who ruled over a household, became a prisoner who ruled over the prison system of Egypt, just became the chief administrator, the CEO, the commander of all of Egypt. How is that even possible when Hebrews are like dogs to the Egyptians? Because God's hand was in it. Joseph's life, his life probably still does not make sense to him even to that day. Even to the day we're talking about. He is probably scratching his head and thinking, God, I'm thankful, but I don't understand. But God has a way of making sense out of the nonsensical. God has a way of bringing clarity to that which is chaos. God has a way of bringing purpose to that mess we call life. And he does it uniquely through each and every one of us. But we have to respond. This is a picture of our sanctification, of our spiritual journey, of our spiritual life. You and I, we are in the chaos of sin. We are prisoners to our sin. But God is elevating us through Jesus Christ. He is saving us. And he is sanctifying us and continuing to protect us and move us from where we started out in that pit of life. Protected up to a certain age as a child. Then into the pit of life of sin. Out of the pit and on a, a path of progress to the house of the king. We arrive at the house of the king when we part this life and enter into eternity with God in heaven. But God is preparing the path. He's moving us along it. He's sanctifying us, making us holy as he is holy. And he has got a plan for us. But we have to choose to be obedient to him. Joseph continually gave God the glory. I don't do it on my own. God does it. And those who know Joseph, those who interact with Joseph, they see the hand of God because of the life and the words and the faithfulness of Joseph. And you and I are called to be like Joseph. To be that vessel through which God is seen in his glory. And the vessel through which others will be protected. Joseph is the protector of the known world. God has called him to that. Maybe you and I are... A little bit like the, 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 the cupbearer. And we need to say. I now remember. What I had previously forgotten. Every time I read through scripture. I find things I don't remember being there. You like that? Things that I've forgotten along the way. Things that I know to be true. But I'm not practicing on a daily basis. And I need to bring those things to remembrance. And confess them to my Lord. And I need to go back to faithfulness. Why? So that God gets the glory. Verse 46 tells us Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. How long does it take for God to get you where he wants you to go? I don't know for you. I have a feeling I've not yet arrived in my life and I'm a little older than 30. But whatever it takes, are you willing? Whatever it takes, are you willing to make God first so that he will shine? You see, this is a great story about God's redemptive power. Oh, the story's not over. We got a few more weeks in this. We still got to deal with Joseph's brothers, don't we? And Papa. 
We got to get everybody into Egypt. The story is not over. Life still is not going to make sense. But God is going to be glorified every step of the way because of the faithfulness of Joseph. How are you leading your family? How are you leading your life? How are your neighbors seeing you in your relationship with God? What are you doing for the glory of God? And how are you making his glory known? I believe throughout this year that, that, that what God's called me to teach, what God's called me to project uh, to people, there are two really simple things. I didn't come up with these. I didn't make these up. They're just simple principles of truth. That we need to know God. That means we need to be in his word. That means we need to be among God's people. We need to be studying together. We need to be doing those things which will help us to know God. And we, as we get to know God, we need to be making him known. It's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And to love your neighbor as yourself. It's, a, it's the great commandment of Christ. It's those simple things that he's calling us to do. So church, let me ask you again. I ask this every week. Maybe I need to start with those who are listening and hearing my voice. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I know life doesn't always make sense. I talked to the neighbor of our church whose house burned down last night. It doesn't make sense. I've been in touch with our association director who's, who's uh, in touch with the, the pastor's family or the pastor that died. We're all worried about coronavirus, and he was trimming trees. Life doesn't make sense. There's, we, you could name a thousand different things that's going on. Life just doesn't always make sense. But how do we take that life not making sense and give God the glory? Our pastor friend Jeff Spencer up in the north part of the state. His wife Darlene passed with coronavirus several weeks ago now. And every week he's preaching and teaching online. So that God gets the glory. How are we taking this life that doesn't make sense. And giving God glory through it. So let me ask you. Do you know Jesus? Because he's the start. And we need to make him known. And we need to know him personally as our Lord and Savior. Have you made that commitment? And then church, let me ask you, are you serving him faithfully? Or are you like the cupbearer who needs to remember and recommit and do what's right each and every day of your life? You see, we're being called to make a commitment. And we're being called to fulfill that commitment. We're being called to renew that covenant that we've made with God. As he has saved us and given us new life. Or as he's offering to save you if you're not saved. And to give you that new life. We need to be walking in faithfulness. Are you doing that? I want to end with just a simple invitation. This part of the service. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father unless he comes to the Son. John chapter 14 verse 6. Do you know Jesus Christ? If not. Will you admit that you're a sinner? Will you believe that he is the son of God? And will you confess him as your Lord and Savior? If you're going to do that, if you're willing to do that, or if you need help doing that and you want to, send me an email. Pastor at cbcgreenfield.org. I want to be able to get in touch with you. I want to be able to connect with you. I want to be able to have a conversation with you that will help you get where you need to be with Jesus. Second, if you already know Jesus Christ, church, how do you need to, be, how do you need to respond this morning? As God's calling you to faithfulness. Making him known. If you need to talk. That same email. Send me a message. Let me know. We want to walk through this life with you. And help you to become all God has called you to be. It took Joseph 13 years. Of slavery. And imprisonment. To get before the throne of Pharaoh. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you are in your life, but I know this. God's got a plan for you, and he loves you, and he wants to reveal himself to you. Will you allow him to receive glory and honor through your life by making Jesus your Lord? Let me pray for us. Father, we love you, and we thank you for the privilege of being in your word again today. And seeing the story of Joseph go from the, the pits to the pinnacle, from the problem to the solution to the reward. But the story's not over. There's still work to be done. He's interpreted the dream. 
He's given the resolution, but now he's got to put it into practice. He's got to live it out. So Lord, help us to understand that in our salvation, we must live it out. And for those who need to be saved, that they've got to start by acknowledging Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Father, save the lost and use the saved that you might receive all the glory and honor. Help us to be faithful as we serve you day in and day out. And be glorified as we commit or recommit ourselves to you today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So church, thank you for being with us. I, I am really trying hard to preach in 30 minutes and not 45, but it didn't work today. I have a timer up here so I know exactly how long I went. <clears throat> you don't have to tell me. Um, we are going to be meeting together uh, in the coming weeks. We've announced that our first public service will be May 24th. A uh, few of you will be gathering for Sunday school in some small group settings. If you're interested in that, please contact your Sunday school teacher. Contact Paul or myself. Uh, the women, some of the women are in a women's Bible study on Zoom. Men, your opportunity is online. It was emailed out this week. You need to respond and sign up for that for a men's Bible study, Series 33. Uh, that we'll be doing through a Zoom conference. But we'll also begin slowly to meet in Sunday school groups. Talk to your teacher. If you're not a part of Calvary and you want to be in one of our small groups, please contact me, pastor at cbcgreenfield.org. Um, we seat about 45 uh, people in the sanctuary. Tim, will you do a, a large room Zoom? Go back to the home on the camera. They're going to see the back of your heads, guys. No, fi fi fix the bed head. <clears throat> All right. And uh, see, you see in here 15 pews. They're 14 feet wide. Uh, we can use every other pew that gets about 45 people. I figure there'll be uh, a few couples in here like Paul and Darlene. They, they kind of like each other most of the time. They sit close. Zach lives with them, with their son. So, so he's there too. And uh, Dan and Jan, you know, they're married. And unless Dan's misbehaving, you know, they're, they're sitting close together. And so I think we can get about 50 people in the sanctuary. So on May 24th, if you want to come to Calvary, we're only going to seat about 50 people in here. That means we can't have 300 people show up and do social distancing, which we want to do. So help us. Send me an email. Say, Pastor, I plan to attend. Uh, we need to know what that's going to look like. We may have to open up our 8 o'clock service. We're, we're considering that. We, could, we can flip-flop the pews we use uh, from 8 o'clock to 1030. But there's going to be cleaning and other things that need to happen. We want to stay healthy and we want you to stay healthy. So we need your help. If you do come in the building, we're asking you to follow all the governor's recommendations. Wear masks. Um, Use hand sanitizer. Bring your own. We do have some here, but just make sure we don't run out. There's Lysol wipes going to be all over the place. Grab some and wipe stuff down after you touch it, especially in the bathrooms. Grab a Lysol wipe before you go in and grab one on your way out. Make sure you wipe stuff down. Don't use the water fountains. We have about 50 daycare kids in here using the water fountains every day. You're going to be exposed to them. Yes, they're cleaned, but we're not making any promises. We're not going to serve you coffee and donuts. If you want... want I hope you can make it an hour without needing that. But if you can't make it an hour, bring your own with a lid on it. We don't want spills and such. Uh, we want to be healthy and we want you to be healthy. And we don't want you to get us sick and we don't want to get you sick. So we need to play nice together. So hear this with love and compassion. Stay home. If you're not 100% sure you're ready to come out. If you can do technology and worship the Lord... Continue to do that for now. All of our services, Sunday morning and Sunday night, will be broadcast. You can worship at home. Make room for somebody who may not be able to do that. I don't really know what to expect. Uh, I know this. We're not ready for a full house. We do love you and we do miss you. We want to see you. But we want to do it smartly. We want to do it with wisdom. And so follow those guidelines and help us along the way. Uh, be an encouragement. Give, a, give us grace when we fail you. Uh, and get, give us wisdom and insight if you have it along the way. We're doing our best to do our best. Tonight at 6 o'clock, um, I will be in the sanctuary. I, I know it's Mother's Day and we don't have church service on Mother's Day evening most, most years. I will be in the sanctuary at 6 o'clock tonight uh, having a time of prayer. 
This is not a time of preaching. This is not a time of uh, 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 socialization. This is not a time of singing. It's just going to be a prayer time where we're going to uh, share together in some needs and some times of prayer and uh, lift some things up. And again, I, I, I intend this to be a small group. This is not an all call. Everybody show up. Uh, this is for some of you who just feel the need to be here to pray. The sanctuary is going to be open. We ask that all those same social distancing and safety precautions take place tonight at 6 o'clock. Last 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll head back home. And so uh, you're invited if, 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 if that is a ministry that will meet a need in your life. With that, I don't think I have anything else, anything I've missed. Thank you for being with us this morning. We look forward to worship with you, with you in person when the time is right. Help us along that path. And until then, may God bless you and keep you. Mothers, we love you. Have a happy Mother's Day. Have a good day.